Deadlock is a critical issue in concurrent computing where two or more processes cannot proceed because each is waiting for the other to release resources. In a multi-process environment, resources are often limited and processes compete for these resources. When multiple processes hold certain resources and wait indefinitely for others, a deadlock situation arises. Understanding and managing deadlocks is vital for maintaining system efficiency and ensuring that processes can complete their tasks in a timely manner. The resource allocation graph is a graphical representation used to illustrate the allocation of resources to processes and their requests for additional resources. This graph provides a clear visualization of the current state of resources in a system, facilitating the identification of potential deadlocks. There are two different types of nodes, processes P1, P2, P3, etc., and resources R1, R2, R3, etc. are represented as squares. There are two types of edges. There are assignment edges, which are directed edges from resources to processes, for example, R2 to P1, indicating that a resource is currently allocated to a specific process. There are also request edges, which are directed edges from processes to resources, for example, P2 to R5, indicating that a process is requesting a resource. The presence of cycles in the resource allocation graph indicates a potential deadlock, as it suggests that processes are waiting on resources held by each other. A wait for graph is a common approach used after the resource allocation graph identifies cycles. The wait for graph is a directed graph in which processes are represented as nodes and directed edges indicate that one process is waiting for a resource held by another process. A cycle in this graph signifies a deadlock. For example, P1 is waiting for a resource held by P2, P2 is waiting for a resource held by P4, and P4 is waiting for a resource held by P1. Once a deadlock is detected, the system must implement recovery strategies to resolve the deadlock. There are two common recovery methods. Number one is process termination. This involves terminating one or more processes involved in the deadlock. The choice of which process to terminate can depend on various factors, such as process priority or resource usage. After terminating a process, its resources are released, allowing other processes to continue. Number two is resource preemption. This method involves forcibly taking resources away from processes and reallocating them to others. This can lead to inconsistencies, but may be necessary to resolve the deadlock. Finally, we have deadlock prevention. Deadlock prevention strategies aim to prevent the occurrence of deadlocks by ensuring that at least one of the necessary conditions for deadlock is never met. The first condition is mutual exclusion, which states that resources are not shared. Only one process can hold a resource at a time. The prevention strategy is to make resources shareable when possible, for example, read-only files. The second condition is hold and wait. A process holding resources must not wait for additional resources. The prevention strategy is to require processes to request all resources at once, ensuring that they don't hold resources while waiting for more. The third condition is no preemption. Resources cannot be forcibly taken from a process holding them. The prevention strategy is to allow preemption where resources can be forcibly taken from processes that request additional resources. The fourth condition is circular wait. A circular chain of processes exists where each process is waiting for a resource held by the next process in the chain. The prevention strategy is to impose a strict order on resource allocation, requiring that processes request resources in a predefined order in order to avoid cycles. In summary, understanding deadlock in concurrent systems involves identifying deadlock conditions through detection algorithms like wait for graphs and resource allocation graphs. Once a deadlock is detected, recovery strategies such as process termination and resource preemption are employed to resolve the issue. Preventative measures, including resource ordering and avoiding hold and wait conditions, help mitigate the likelihood of deadlocks occurring. These techniques are essential for designing robust systems that effectively manage resource allocation and process execution in concurrent environments.